have a quiet work environment amongst uh, students and other professionals. So it's a really good work environment. In fact, to the chagrin of, of the people that work there and probably there too often. So I know all the clientele and I know all the waiters and waitresses and all the people that work there and they're all class people. So um, on top of that, there, the, uh, this is a, a multifaceted restaurant, restaurant as was previously said. Uh, it's uh, coffee, great food. Uh, in the evening, yes, they, they, you, maybe once in a while when I work late, I go from coffee, I go from Java to vino. Uh, as, I, as I work through the night, but uh, for the most part, it's a, it's a great restaurant that has all these different services that provide it on the south side. And otherwise, I'd have to be going downtown or uptown Alaska to, to, to get to an establishment that has internet and I can do my work, uh, and uh, as others too. So it's a great place to, to have a nice place like that in the south side of La Crosse. Having the beer garden, or what I told Tina to name it, Cafe El Fresco, uh, some outside seating on the south side would be fantastic. Uh, it should be done because, again, you have to go downtown for outside seating or, 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 all, or far north for outside seating. To have it there would be great. As far as noise, um, I did some research on, on the Internet. Uh, I actually have, you know, part of my company is audio and video design, but uh, I just looked in Google and looked at sound decibel levels. Uh, so everything on the Internet, of course, is true. So you have to take that for in, into uh, account. Um, but uh, the sound decibel levels from traffic is like 80 to 100 decibels. Diesel truck is like 120 decibels. Sound from normal conversation in a, in a conference room is 40 decibels. These people outside, as, as I said before, I'm on my phone in there making calls. I'm working in a quiet environment. If I was outside, it'd still be quiet. Can you wrap it up, please? And that's about all I'm going to say. I'm going to go out there and continue to work. Thank you. Any questions for the speaker? Thank you for coming. I'm going to move over to the other side. First speaker wishing to speak in opposition is Dan Kaminsky, 1239 22nd Drive South, representing the neighborhood. Hi. Yeah, three minutes. Thank you for the time. Uh, first of all, we did have a petition signed by 38 people in the neighborhood uh, requesting that you don't approve that license. Could you speak uh, into the mic, please? Sure. We did have a petition signed by 38 people requesting that you don't pass this because of the way the neighborhood is uh, uh, disrupted. Uh, and I do have some pictures that I want to bring and I want to submit. The first three are pictures that are the parking, not in their parking lot, on the street in front of our houses. Uh, much to my dismay, there are more than just two neighbors next to Java Vino. There's a neighborhood. And I'm really happy to hear that you're promoting neighborhoods because you finally caught up to me. I moved into La Crosse in 1985. And in 1985 to about 1999, the first house that I had, I slowly but surely as a hobby, I restored it. And then I sold it. And I bought another house. That was on Market Street. And then what I did was I bought a house on Cass Street. Not one of the big ones, just a small one. And over the next few years, guess what I did? I restored it and I sold it, promoting the neighborhoods, meeting the people, finding out what they were like, working on my house. I now have a house three doors down from Java Vino. Guess what I'm doing? Have any idea? You're right, I'm restoring it. I have done everything now in that house, the three bedrooms, the two bathrooms, down to the two by fours. I have the kitchen and the living room floor left to strip. That's it, I just finished the dining room floor just recently. So I'm glad you're promoting neighborhoods. That's what we have to do. We have to promote neighborhoods. A beer garden will not promote a neighborhood. They put in 19 or 20 tables. What does that do? That takes another 15, 16 cars. These pictures were taken over One minute. about 20 minute, over a 20 minute period. And they started with two or three on the street. And then the street was almost filled. And then the street was filled and they were there for hours. And then, when people couldn't find a spot, if you look at the last two pictures, and I'm gonna submit these so everybody can see them, they're parked right on our driveways, two of them. Yep, we called the police, and we had tickets written. I guess that's income for the city, but do you really wanna do that to promote their business? I, I just don't think it's right to do that. We have infants to teenagers in that neighborhood. We don't need to be promoting alcohol. 
I, it just bothers me that we're doing that. I mean, we have problems with college kids now downtown. We don't need that problem in our neighborhoods. Our trash is increased in front of our houses. The cigarette butts in front of our houses, they won't allow smoking, but you know where they're smoking? Out on the street in front of our houses. We don't need that. Homes in the area, area were purchased before the Can alcohol wrap establishment. Up, sir? Yeah, I'll wrap it up. Moved in, unlike uh, Bluffside, where the tavern was there first. I just oppose it. And I have people with me tonight of the 38 people that signed it. Thank you. We just really oppose it. Any questions for Mr. Kaminsky? Okay, thank you for coming. Thank Next you. speaker wishing to speak in opposition is Katie Link, 1236 22nd Drive South. And you have three minutes. Good evening, nearing good night for me. My name is Katie Lent, and I currently reside at 1236 22nd Drive South. I feel that granting this proposal would truly affect my family in a negative manner. Last week, we were told to look at this as more of an alfresco dining experience. As a graduate of UW-Madison, there are more beer gardens than anyone could count downtown. We referred to these areas as bars, and we treated them as such, being as rowdy outside as we were inside. There were no smoking laws passed in Madison, but somehow this did not eliminate the smoking outdoors. And if someone wanted a cigarette, they simply stepped outside of the dining area. This atmosphere, in my mind, will attract college-age students, and those people tendency, have a tendency to be loud. As summer approaches, we are out in our yards, sitting on our porches, and barbecuing with our neighbors. We're not locked up inside like we are in the wintertime. I don't feel that we need to be interrupted with loud and noise pollution. Last week, we were told sound won't be a problem. Well, the current proposed sound barrier is a required three and a half foot fence surrounding the Alfresco dining area. Javavino has already been known to have lots of live music on weekly basis, dating events for singles, wine tastings, etc. A cabaret license in my eye is only around the corner, and that's what I truly fear. I truly fear that there will be music and a lot of loudness outdoors that is unnecessary. Um, this would affect our neighborhood. We were also told, unfortunately, summer is our slow time and this beer garden would, would increase the profits. Well, as is advertised on the radio, you now have changed locations, you have more parking, you have more seating, and a new drive through Is this not enough? You have gone from 10 employees to 40, which tells me you must be seeing an increase in customers. You have not been in this location over the summer yet, so how do you know what the profit will be? One I minute. Would, okay. I would say just wait. You know, you were in the village, and maybe your profits were down over the summer. You're now in a new location. You haven't even experienced the summer yet. Just let it sit. <laughs> um, finally, I would like to say this to the council and you, Mrs. Schumacher. Put yourself in our shoes, in all honesty. This is where I'm coming from. Just four months ago, there was a vacant building and no traffic to speak of. Now we have a business hundreds of feet from our homes. It's open very early and very late in my eye, 5.30 in the morning with the drive through and up to 11 p.m., that is late, with people parking up and down our street and a proposal to add a beer garden. And how would you feel? <laughs> I'm 26 years old, I'm newly married, and would like to start a family. My neighbors across the street have little kids, my next door neighbor's an infant. We are currently thriving as a neighborhood and doing better than ever. Please consider the integrity of this neighborhood and let us preserve what we have. Thank you. Any questions for the speaker? Okay, thank you for coming. Next speaker wishing to speak in opposition is Sam Siebenhauer, 2330 Adams Street. May I give these to, to you, someone? Yes, Mr. Sequest will make sure those make the rounds. Thank you, Mr. Sequest. Mr. Siebenauer, you have three minutes. Uh, Sam Siebenauer, 2330 Adams Street, La Crosse. <clears throat> I want, first, I want to say I want to uh, thank Tammy and Howard for having a great location over there uh, and a great job of Eno. Um, however, I am in opposition to the, the beer garden part of this. Um, I'm in, in opposition to having smoking. Uh, she, sa she says that she's not going to allow smoking, but I'm hoping that the council can somehow um, make that so that they cannot have smoking. Um, the noise issue, uh, I, I understand when she says, well, we're not going to have noise out there. We're not going to maybe have anything, but can you guys tweak the 
um, uh, whatever it is, uh, this piece of legislation so that we won't have noise out there? I don't know if you can do that. Um, the beer garden, I <coughs> when I first heard of it, I thought, oh, they're going to have beer plus wine uh, and all of the other things, uh, types of alcohol. Uh, I'm not so sure about that, but um, I'm in opposition as, as it stands, and I hope that you can can understand the neighbors around there and uh, their concerns. Even though T Tammy and Harold have uh, uh, done a great job so far, maybe you can tweak the legislation a little bit for us. Help us out in the neighborhood. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Mr. Siebenauer? Okay, thank you for coming. Before I go to the rebuttal round, uh, the non-speakers are wishing to speak or registering in opposition is Donna Vigorist, 1239 South 22nd Drive. Registering in opposition, Ken Hudson Ryder, 1233 22nd Drive. Uh, registering in favor is Alan Horton, 409 Third Avenue South on Alaska. Registering in opposition is Chester Bring Bringy, 1240 South 22nd Street. And also registering in opposition is Mar uh, Mavis Bringy, 1240 South 22nd Drive. And I will go over the rebuttal round. If the proponents have rebuttal, uh, then we'll have a rebuttal round, and we do. Go ahead. Thank Three you, minutes. sir. I don't know if the uh, city council has the authority to add on the no smoking, but if they do, I would very much so welcome that. Um, it would only help me back what I'm telling my customers is that they cannot smoke out there. Um, I spent 57 days at UW-Madison, never leaving there once, watching my father on life support. After having half of his lung removed, I do not support smoking. My daughter was the Youth Advocate of the Year last year on the front page of the Tribune here for all the work she has done throughout the country, advocating against teens against tobacco use and fighting directly against big tobacco as a very young person after watching my father. So smoking is really um, definitely something you can count on me uh, not supporting there. And if you can add it on there as a no smoking, I would appreciate it. Um, as far as the you know drinking problem goes, uh, I do have six children, three of whom are in college. I am very well aware of the risks of uh, teen binge drinking and college age drinking, and I am disheartened by the things that have happened in La Crosse. We do have a lot of college students in our establishment. Uh, almost none of them drink. They come because we offer them free coffee. <laughs> if you offer a college kid something free, they're not going to buy something else. That's the way it works at that point in time. Um, I don't think that's going to be an issue. Um, it is true, I guess I didn't state the fact that yes, there is a three and a half foot fence, that is what is required by the legislation, so that of course would be there. I don't know how much of a sound barrier a three and a half foot high fence provides, but that, that would of course be there. Um, I am sure Mr. Kaminsky has all sorts of pictures for you. I certainly um, could take you several hundred pictures at every hour of the day over the next week. There definitely are times and events that are very, um, that do get very busy. As I mentioned, we did host for the city of La Crosse. This was not our event. This was for the city last month for an event that they anticipated selling 60 tickets and they sold 103. Uh, that was a great event for them. Um, of course, we don't have 103 parking spots. We are working, trying to find out other options, as I said, for perhaps what other options can be made. And what I mentioned at last week's meeting is having the parking lot completely redone, which our landlord is actually helping us do. Um, I don't think that a project of that magnitude can be done overnight. Um, that is a very odd shaped piece of property and it does take some time and design to try to figure out a better way to use the space that we currently have. Um, there are some other problems that exist in the parking lot with drainage and such that um, are requiring input from the city regarding rain gardens and, and things of that nature. So certainly we're always looking to improve the property and the neighborhood and there was previous mention this evening as well about um, you know having different amenities in the neighborhood and I do think that this corner of the south side of La Crosse now has just a little bit of everything. Okay and we have a question for you from the council member of the 7th district uh, James Surf. Thank you Chairman Becker. Uh, Mrs. Schumacher I first of all applaud you for being amenable to to um, assuring us and and the neighbors that uh, you discourage actively discourage smoking. Um, I think 
a major concern is the noise and the parking with this. Uh, the, the parking is, is problematic period with, with, with your, your patrons, but the noise is something that, that we can discuss here. Uh, would you be willing to consider putting up a fence on the north side of your property? I understand there's a door facing the nor north side that's taller than the three and a half feet and is solid to help um, reduce the transference of noise in, in the northerly direction. If somebody thinks that a fence like that really is going to improve it, I don't necessarily mind. If you look at the plan, the majority of the seats are on the east side of the building. I believe there are two, maybe three seats. I don't unfortunately have that seating chart in front of mm -hmm. me, but you're talking four or six people, and I know that the folks in this room who have been in there simply know our customers. And I realize I'm asking these neighbors to put faith in me to believe that we are not going to have a noise problem. And, and these neighbors don't necessarily know me. So they don't know how I operate a business. And most people don't know that I actually do run three companies, not just this one. Um, I do pride myself in being a good person and running a good business. And um, I'm actually extremely sensitive to noise myself. So, um, you know, I, I don't know, I'm not a noise person, so I don't know if that six foot high fence is gonna help you the way, the way people might think it might. I, but I'm not really opposed to it either. I mean, if, if, the, if the committee feels that a six foot high fence is gonna be the answer, then, then I'm for that on the north side. I think if you put a six foot fence obviously around the whole thing, well then you've got nothing to look at, you might as well not be outside. Thank you for your open-mindedness. Okay, I, we have no further question. Oh, we have a question from Mr. Fermanic. Would you be interested in eliminating the north side um, part of the beer garden? I can't legally eliminate the north side because that is where the door is and the legislation provides that it must connect to the door. Um, so I can't eliminate, I mean, I can't well, you eliminate can that. You could eliminate the tables out there at least so people could walk from that door out to the east side where the tables are, right? Technically, yes. Um, I guess I would need to you know, see that plan in front of me. Like I said, I do believe approximately 30 of those seats are on the, on the east side, which of course on the east side that runs north to south. So you're gonna have some tables on that north end, which is closest to my landlord uh, who is 90 and I assure you she will call me instantly if there is any noise out there that is not proper. Um, I know that some of you in this room have spoken with her personally, not regarding this matter, but others, and know how uh, smart she is. So she's not gonna allow us to have anything happening there that is foul. Okay, we have a question for you from the council member of the 17th District, <coughs> Richard Swans. Thank you, just uh, an observation and a question. The observation is simply that I, I can't believe that noise would be an issue on Losey Boulevard. I mean, I, I lived on Losey Boulevard, and I'm telling you, unless things have changed, it is the busiest street in the city. So to have a few people out there having something, it just seemed to me that it will be drowned out by the traffic. The issue for me is parking, and I, and I don't know what the answer to that is, but do you know? I mean, before you moved in there, uh, it was stood vacant for a while. I think it was a video store or something. But there are other businesses across the street, I believe. And I mean, there are other businesses that I assume take some street parking. Uh, yes. Can you just speak to that? There, there are some businesses that take street parking. I mean, obviously the only other business next to me is Advance America. And as I had spoken with some of the city council members the other day, I did sit out there and watch the traffic for several hours. There were four cars parked on that street. I could not identify one of them. I went and asked every employee. They were not one of my employees. And eight hours later, they were still there. I don't know whose cars those were. And in fact, the one gentleman that I spoke with about that, we even commented how oddly this person was parked. They were not in my establishment. I don't know what they were doing parked in this neighborhood. Um, I think that for us, we are working on, like I said, the helmet initiative because a lot of our employees do live within a distance that they could ride their bike to work and we can offer them an incentive to do so as far as employee parking goes. Um, 
and like I said, we're looking at the redoing of the lot, which is not a project that happens overnight. I think many of you have driven by our establishment over the last week trying to test the validity of the claim about the parking situation, and most hours of the day there is not a problem. Um, I will tell you the night that he took those pictures, we rolled out our burger menu, which we've been talking about, our fresh never frozen hand patted custom season burgers for the last four months, and we rolled them out on that night for five bucks. It was, we ran out of cheese. So, um, you know, we won't be doing $5 burgers again, but you know, there are events that take place from time to time that do take up some parking. And as I understand it, there are areas all over this city where residential areas butt up to commercial areas, and you kind of all have to learn to get along and work together because I need them and they need me. Um, you know, they might not think that they need me, but I do good things for this community. I will do good things for this neighborhood. We obviously have not had an opportunity to do much revitalization to the outside because we started our construction in the winter months. Um, but as we add this beer garden and flower gardens and things of that nature, I do intend to um, greatly improve the curb appeal of that property, which was not very appealing for the last many years. Mr. Swans, was your question answered? Yes, thank you. Okay, I see no further questions for you. And then I'm gonna, I got two, We'll move over to the other side for rebuttal. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Siebenauer wants to be first, and then, then I'll go to the other gentleman. And it's three minutes for the whole side here. Well, thank you again, and uh, thank you, Tammy and uh, Howard, for having a great um, establishment there. I uh, have been there myself. But um, again, um, I would like to s ask you, you said you would be willing uh, if the council would uh, somehow help you out with the smoking issue. Um, I've also had an issue. Would you be willing not to put speakers out in that area and, and not have um, your music projected out into that area? Um, I would hopefully that you could possibly do that as well to satisfy some of the noise issues. Um, I, I agree with Dick that myself living on Mosey Boulevard, you do hear a lot of drowning out with uh, the vehicles going by, but um, I think by not having a speaker system out there and not having your entertainment projected out that way would kind of keep it from coming over the top, over the other houses to our houses. Um, if you would agree with that with the council, um, I think that would be great, along with the no smoking out in your area. Any questions for Mr. Siebenauer? Thank you, sir. Uh, and Mr. Kaminsky, you have uh, one minute and 47 seconds. Hopefully it won't take that long. Uh, my question is with the extra seating, if you get this beer garden license, where are you gonna put the cars? Uh, we, we don't allow people in the public uh, hearing to okay, ask then, questions. Then I'm, I'm asking the council, where are they gonna put the cars? You can see the parking problem now. That is an issue. It is a big issue. I cannot park in front of my own house. My friends can't park, come to visit. My daughters can't come to visit because they can't park in front of my house. Or the other neighbors, and they're here with me. They're complaining about the same thing. If you permit this light, you're talking another 15 or 16 cars, they're gonna be taking up that neighborhood. That's something that they should have had foresight and looked at. I'm glad they have them as a neighbor in a restaurant. I was in a restaurant business for 12 years. I had five units. And the unit that we had that was in a neighborhood, we made sure that we had enough parking. And we told everybody that came in, don't park in front of the neighbor's houses, park in our lot. I would sooner have you come back later so you can find a place in the lot. And everybody approved, I just talked with them. That's all we're asking, is that we don't have people parking in front of our houses consistently. It's getting old, and it's been only a few months. Thanks. Okay, any questions for Mr. Kaminsky? And then I'm gonna ask the owner to address that question about the cars. Can I also address the other gentleman's question? About okay, the, uh, I'll okay. allow it. Um, we aren't applying for a cabaret license, and we are not planning to project our indoor entertainment outside. We obviously, know that that intersection is the second busiest intersection in the city of La Crosse, or so I've been told by the city traffic engineer. 
it is a very loud intersection. One of the council members even commented to me, I'm not really sure why people would wanna even sit out there. Um, that said, we would like the opportunity to, you know, work with our sound folks to figure out, can they pipe speakers to the bottom of those tables that would, what we play inside our store, we call Muzak, it's just background coffee shop music. It's not rock and roll, it's, it's intended for, so that it's quiet enough to just create an ambiance but not have any, you know, overbearingness over the folks that are talking. We don't have any plans for that, that at this point, but we will not be projecting our, our entertainment outdoors. I did want to clarify that, and we are not applying for an outdoor cabaret license as well. Um, regarding the parking situation, um, there again, I'm asking these neighbors to put some faith in me and knowing my business. Do I know that I have a bigger space with more parking spots and a drive-through? I surely do. And I have all sorts of data that tell you exactly how many cars come through that drive-through, what time they come through the drive-through. And obviously my drive-through does not cause a parking problem because people are driving through, they're not staying there. So the drive-through I, I think is kind of a separate issue um, there altogether. Um, regarding the parking situation, once again, I am sorry to sound like I'm beating a dead horse. We are working with our customers on trying to put initiatives in place that will encourage them to ride their bicycle or if they live you know, close enough to walk to our establishment. We are working with folks on even just putting a bug in their ear like, why don't you carpool? Why do eight of you come and all drive eight separate cars? Um, I think it's just a thing of the times and it's unfortunate and you know, we did have an event recently where I specifically called every single reservation we had and asked them that they needed to, that they needed to carpool or that I would seek permission from Kmart for them to park in their lot and I did and they parked there. Um, believe me, I am trying to make this situation better. I just realized that I can't make it to the likeness of some of these folks fast enough and I can appreciate that, but I, I know my business and I know what kind of traffic decrease we have in the summer. And granted, I have not had a summer in this place, but when you cut your sales in half in the summer, you have some inkling that even if we've improved by 50% over what we used to be, we still have very significantly decreased traffic in the summertime. And we have a question for you from council member of the third district, Chris Olson. Thank you. Uh, how many parking spots do you have now? I believe it's 60. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you for coming. I need a motion to all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, public hearing is now closed. Um, the j &E recommendation was to approve subject to compliance. Subject to compliance, okay. The motion is to approve subject to compliance. Um, I see no council members wishing to speak so if you support the motion on the floor, you vote yes. If you're opposed, you vote no. Okay, it passes 13 to three. Could the city clerk read the three no votes? Eight, nine, and 16. Okay, so the recommendation for Thursday night is for approval and 12 votes will be required on Thursday night. Okay, I've got one public hearing left. It is 13 0142. Uh, I, have an or I have an ordinance to amend paragraph 20.02, parent F, parent 4, parent B of the Code of Ordinance, Sea of Cross, to allow for a temporary Class B licenses in various parks with the, with the Board of Park Commissioners' approval. And I'm going to ask the city clerk to give us a nickel version before we get going. Go ahead, Terry. This ordinance um, establishes the locations for temporary beer and wine licenses that may be issued for outdoor picnics and gatherings. Um, one of the main things, or one thing that it, it is intending to do is to add Veterans Freedom Park. Uh, that is a park that uh, last year um, this council approved a separate resol or ordinance allowing the bass tournament. Uh, that was a one-time event. And this particular change in this ordinance um, adds Veterans Freedom Park and it makes it um, so that it is an approved park and it's not subject to having to come back every time 
um, there's an event in that park. Um, another thing that it does is, um, is it, um, it did remove the, the uh, dates from the ordinance. You used to be able to have, or currently you have, an, you can have an event in Riverside Park, but only during uh, June 25th through July 10th. It was primarily set up for River Fest. And so th this ordinance is kind of a cleanup ordinance to remove the dates, to add Veterans Freedom Park, to, um, to clean up the language and, um, and say that any time there is an event in any park, um, it, it does have to be approved by the Board of Park Commissioners. Um, they have to support um, having an event with alcohol in the park. Uh, this particular ordinance covers alcohol sales. It does not cover just general consumption or private events. It's for licenses um, that are issued to bona fide clubs and organizations, veterans organizations for um, you know a one-time special event permit. So that's kind of a summary of what um, what this ordinance does. Thank you, thank you, uh, Terry. Uh, Mr. Satori, would you like to comment now or wait till after the public hearing? Okay, I need a motion for a public hearing. Uh, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Okay, I have one person wishing to speak. A uh, person wishes to speak in opposition is Jean Cromie, W23374 11th Street, Trumpelow, representing Echo Park. And you have three minutes. Good evening and thank you for your time tonight. My name is Jean Cromie. I'm the executive director at Myrick Hicks in Eco Park. I've been the director since December and prior to that I was the assistant to director for about six months. I'm excited about the potential of our organization, the work that we're doing and the partnership that we can create with the city of La Crosse. I'm here to speak in opposition of the amended motion. It's our understanding that an amended motion has been presented, which now specifically excludes the Eco Park. I'd like to take a few moments to explain why we support the original motion, which was presented to the JNA committee. The Eco Park is a nonprofit organization, no longer receiving tax, da taxpayer dollars. As a nonprofit, we would like to continue to hold a couple of fundraisers each year at the Eco Park which allow us to sell alcohol to, comers, to cover some of those expenses. For example, in 2002, we had two such requests. One was our annual banquet. As the current motion reads, we would not be able to do this. Though requests will not be made often, the Class B permit is imp an important piece to our nonprofit fundraising efforts. And as you probably know, fundraising is key to our existence. Therefore, we would appreciate a return to the original motion that does not exclude the Eco Park in this ordinance. I also have three of our Eco Park board members here in opposition of the motion, um, and I thank you for your consideration. Um, are there any questions for the speaker? Um, Mr. Satori, Mr. Mangers, uh, light were, were on the board before you spoke. Councilmember Richmond, do you have a question? Yes. Chairman, um, and thank you for coming in. I did make that amendment on there with the information that was provided to me. Um, and I guess I had apprehension being that in 2011, there were, I believe, 11 different functions there when Jeff Shu was in charge. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was, you know, quite a few that were uh, being held there, being that wasn't the intent of having even the building built uh, for what the use was intended for. I have no objection to um, uh, ch uh, changing, I, I mean, I certainly will change that and have you continue doing the two events per year. Um, I just felt by doing that, it would raise the issue of how many really should we be having in that public building? Um, I thought it was extreme with 11. That's why I did it. And I certainly don't want to take away business from what your intent is. 
Um, but I also want to make sure that we aren't taking catering business uh, from other facilities as well, and that's why I did that. So I apologize for the confusion. Thank you. No okay, uh, any other questions? Mr. Swans, do you have a question for the speaker? Okay, thank you for coming. Uh, I need a motion to close the public hearing. Aye. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Uh, the non speakers, Kathy. Uh, Tizer, N 2410, Three Town Road, uh, representing Echo Board, is in opposition, but uh, wishing to register in favor, but in favor of the original legislation, Paul Borsheim, N 3304, Bond Road, and uh, registering in opposition, but he's in favor of the, as originally uh, written is David Lang, 2505 Smith Valley Road, representing Myrick Hickson Echo Park. Okay, first speaker of the council is John Satori, District 6. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would like to make a motion to uh, go back to uh, the way it was originally approved by the Park Board. Okay. Uh, the motion is to delete the amendment. Um, Mr. Menninger, would you wish to sp speak on the amendment? No, um, Mr. Swans, do you wish to speak on the amendment? Okay, so we have no speak, no council members on the amendment. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Okay, the, the amendment from Janie is deleted. Okay, Mr. Swans, you've got your light on. I, I, I don't need to speak, so I don't. Turn the light off if you wish. Thank, Thank you. you. So then uh, we will we will approve this as originally presented to the J and E committee and the Park Board. Uh, all in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed? Carried. Um, is there somebody out in the audience that has a? Oh, I I apologize to Mr. Clemens here. Um, he's here for the um, various licenses. Let me read that. Um, He's here for 13-0190 um, uh, license application pursuant to Chapter 20 of the La Crosse Municipal Code for the license period 2012 through 2013, a resolution proving the same except for Jalovino. And uh, Mr. Clements is here for a beer license for the Bass Masters June 20th through June 23rd, 2013. And he's requesting that we approve this subject to compliance. Okay, and that would take care of the balance of the licenses. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, carried. Is there anybody out in the audience that has something before us but did not sign up? Okay, thank you. Madam President, uh, can I go to the speed round? Okay, on the speed round, uh, okay, there, I have a holdout for a correction. 13-0150 uh, is a res resolution accepting the long range master plan of a terrible college. The j &E recommendation was to receive and file not to be adopted unless there's objections to that. Uh, uh, I'm gonna so order. Is there any objections? Okay, oh, Terry? Uh, okay, so that's why that is the way it is. Okay, thanks for clearing that up. Okay, um, Council Member Wigdahl, do you have something that you want held out? Yes, 130116. 131106. Regarding let, the... Let me read that, please. 13, 130116. Right. Okay, I have an ordinance to rescind subsection 20.22, parent double G of the Court of Ordinance of Cross, removing the requirement of 50% written approval from neighbors in order to keep chickens. Uh, the j &E recommendation was to remove the sunset clause and also that uh, unless there's an objection, the approval process would stop at the j &E committee. You got the floor, Marilyn. I have a concern that, that if some people new move into the neighborhood and really object to chickens, I, I think they should be asked, the neighbors should be asked every year. So what you're requesting is the um, the uh, the amendment from Janie approve only if there's an objection. You'd like to have right. that struck, 
Okay, and then we'll have to have an amendment for that to happen. Okay, I'm, let's see. So in other words, you want, you want to strike the uh, Janie approval only unless there's an objection. Right. Okay, is there a second to that? Okay, a second by Mr. Happel. Okay, currently right now, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Madam City Clerk, every year when they apply, they gotta go out and get signatures for 50 plus 1% or 50 plus yeah. under with the amendment that Jane A put on, um, uh, they would not have to get any signatures from neighbors unless there would be a neighbor objecting. Right, that's the way it was originally presented. Okay, now on the, um, on the amendment and uh, on the amendment side is Mr. Olson, go ahead, third district. Thank you. If somebody new moves into the, uh, the neighborhood, all I gotta do is uh, uh, file a complaint with the city. That forces the individual to go out and get 50%. If you got somebody that doesn't like your chickens, they can file a complaint each year. That forces them to go out and get 50% every year. I think we found that the chickens aren't the problem that we thought they were gonna be in the beginning. I fought long and hard to keep chickens out of the city. I lost, you know what? It was an okay plan. It worked just fine. Uh, we don't need to make them make the rounds all the time. I would ask that you turn down the amendment. Thank you. Mr. Swans, do you wish to speak on the amendment? Nope. Okay, you can turn, turn his light off. Okay, thank you, Mr. Swans. Okay, so the uh, motion on the floor is to delete the j and &E amendment, which is approval of the j and &E committee only uh, and would stop at Janey unless there's an ob objection. If you support that, you vote yes. If you do not, vote no. No, I think we better do that on the vote, board. On the board. Okay, it's five yeses and 10 noes. Could the city clerk read the, the five noes? Nine. Um, the five yeses I'm sorry. are 9, 11, 12, 15, and 16. Okay, so that amendment fails. Okay, the motion on the floor is to move approval as presented by the J&E committee. Seeing no discussion, all in favor say aye.